Hello everyone, so your studio is here and I am finally doing my LEGO review on the UCS Imperial Star Destroyer, otherwise known as the ISD-1. I promise I, I, I got this set a while ago, like <laughs> I did not just get this set. Um, but yes, this set is set number 75252, it has 4,784 pieces and retails for $700. Yeah, seven hundred dollars. Um, lots of people griped a lot about how small this piece count is compared to the retail price. And honestly, let me just say, there are some big pieces in this set. Like this isn't your average Joe set with like a bunch of studs. Like the like this set is this set is huge. It is huge. It feels like seven hundred dollars worth of Lego. Like you definitely don't feel like you're getting scammed or anything for your money. Like this is a, this is a good set. Anyway, here's the box, which I've kept. And the box art, let me just say, is absolutely beautiful. Oh, it has so much amazing artwork on it on the side, the different angles, the, oh, wow. The back of it. Uh, let me just say, this is just a, this is just a phenomenal, phenomenal display piece. Uh, yeah, and the, just, uh, the unboxing experience. I won't show you what's inside the box so that, uh, you can have that experience to yourself. But let me just tell you, the entire unboxing experience of this set and the Bunny Falcon set, all of them, just, like, phenomenal experiences. Anyway, this set does come with two exclusive minifigures to this set only, which, I'm not gonna lie, did push me over to getting this set because they just were so good. They look so cool. This set has a lot of gray pieces as you can see. So it does get tiresome looking at gray pieces all the time. I did, I, I built this within the course of a, uh, of a month. But the first time I built this set was in the course of one night. <laughs> so, I mean, yeah, I had both, you know, build it all at once and then build it throughout and Take your time. Anyway, let's get into this set and the detailings of it with the very minimal features. But first, let's get into those minifigures. First minifigure we have is an Imperial Officer. They're actually both Imperial Officers, but they just have different looks to them. This one comes with a standard pistol. And let me just tell you, look at this arm printing. The Imperial Insignia, the shoulder pocket. Oh, just so beautiful. The little scruffle on the sleeve right there. If we continue to turn him, he has some pretty plain back printing, but you can see like the tight black belt from the old style original trilogy costumes that these uh, that these minifigures are not the minifigures but the actors had to wear which is very prominent and oh my gosh what do we have here three pens in a pocket look how detailed that print is just oh my gosh so amazing i'm not i'm not lying that is one of the biggest reasons i got this set was just for that beautiful imperial officer with the arm printing that was just so good the belt right here is amazing. The, uh, his uniform, just all the wrinkles. There's just so much inner detail. The bottom pants pockets, the belt printing that goes with it, just everything. And then we look at the hat right up here, which is very well detailed. And also that face with the headset, very nice. Let's just take the hat off so you can really fully see that entire face. The eyebrows, the... The printing is just, uh, it's all so there, so beautiful. Now we get to look at this minifigure. What is this do we see? That's right, double molded legs, black and gray, looking very, very nice, very uh, reminiscent to those imperial black boots. Once again, you have the very tight black belt going around with some very nice wrinkle printing on the back side. The hats, I believe, are practically the same. Yes, they are. 
Um, so nothing new with the uh, Imperial hats. You do have those nice red and blue uh, rank markings on the uh, chest part of their uniforms. Otherwise, this minifigure, otherwise known as this minifigure's torso. Nice uh, belt printing right here. Once again, he comes with a pistol as well. And let's just take off his hat to see a bit more of his face. Very interesting, very Imperial esque. So, once again, just two really awesome minifigs. If we look down here at the plaque, you can see this is the uh, Devastator. That specific ISD manufacturer, Kuat Drive Yards, length 1600 meters. The engines are Cygnus Spaceworks German 4 Ion engines. Hyperdrive system is class 2, and the weapons are listed right there. You can actually see a lot of these weapons, such as the heavy turbolaser cannons. The uh, uh, it's It doesn't list it on here, but there are orbital bombardment cannons, which I will show later. Uh, and you do have some tractor beams as well and just some really amazing detailing if we look at this uh <laughs> this beauty it's just absolutely humongous like let me just focus in on the front here all right look at that that is pretty massive we get this very nicely uh a brick built tantiv 4 on the side and like this is like the most accurate book built Tangent 4 I've ever seen. You have the skate pods, even the satellite dish right there. The engines even look pretty nice. Everything is just so well balanced, so well made, and there's the underside of it. It is clipped on to the Star Destroyer with this translucent piece, and the clip attaches right in there. This Tantive 4 can also be stored underneath the ship, just like how in the opening of A New Hope, the Star Destroyer docks with the Tantive 4. So if we come underneath, we see uh, some detailing, and right here is a little area. It's not where the Tantive 4 docks, but there is apparently, it's like a mini hangar area, but that does exist. Uh, we keep on going under, we have, this is the area where the Tantive 4 is allowed to dock. It also comes with a nice TIE Fighter, mini brick-built TIE Fighter that goes there as well. Uh, that is also a nice touch that LEGO gave. Um, but yeah, it has very great detail, and the way that you attach the Tantive is through uh, that stud piece right there, and these two like gun pieces kind of shut in around it. And there is the Tantive 4 in the bottom of the ISD being held onto, which is just an amazing little uh, little feature. I love that that exists and it looks very nice up there, very well concealed. Underneath we have the classic little uh, bubble piece right here that is held on, sort of loosely but still really nice. We have the best greveling along the side. Let me just start at the front. It's perfectly, uh, it's actually the same on both sides. It's a times two. But like, there's the lovely array of greveling you've got. This is the orbital bombardment cannon. This cannon does can position itself in multiple angles. And these studs move as well. So that's the orbital, orbital bombardment cannon that uh, actually is on both of them, both sides of the ISD. Coming along here, you have one of the best parts, one of the best features out of the ISD, and that is the engines. Allow me to turn the ISD so that you can see it with the full light. Yeah, look at that. Those engines look so amazing. As we go up, we have even more detailing along the bridge section, the shield generators, uh, this little communications tower that signifies that it is in fact an ISD-1. And then along the side we have the four turbolaser cannons. The fourth one, I never knew this, is different than these three. All of them look really phenomenal. The designs of these guns are just magnificent 
So we'll go 360 degrees, this one as well. Once again, more Grieblin around the side, even up here, along the bridge area. Look at the front of that bridge as well. That is something truly to behold. Lego did a really good job filling in these gaps with these random pieces that connect on one of the sections. Once again, more Grieblin in the front, and then right here, the tractor beams moving down the center all the way to the tip of the destroyer. Uh, these pieces are what connect these two together. So yeah, that's really just the only pieces that are connecting it along the side. And then you have a bunch of those ball bearings in the sockets connecting them. Once again, the same Grievelin along here. Another orbital bombardment gun. And you have that very nice stand. This stand is pretty flimsy. If you want to move the Star Destroyer, it is... This breaks easily if you're not careful. So you do have to be careful. Yes, these stands are built. These Technic pieces are built into the actual Star Destroyer. Just to for uh, structural purposes. And the way to carry the Star Destroyer is that you have to actually take off these two front pieces. So this piece actually comes completely off and so does the other one. Let me just make sure that only this piece comes off. This piece also needs to come off. There we are. And you can see sort of the Technic inner workings. See the inner plates. And you have this uh, red handle right here that you're supposed to use to pick up the uh, ISD. To show this ship is picked up properly, you're going to just grab this red handle right here, labeled with the red tiles. And there's really no place to put this hand. It's really just here to stabilize it. It is pretty heavy, so uh, I suggest... Um, yeah, being able to walk with it for a short amount, uh, for a short amount of distance, uh, and all that jazz. It has. I mean, you can also uh, detach these bigger pieces if you wish. Um, so that you can access this easier, but it's. Sometimes it's not really that worth it. I mean, it's less weight to carry, so uh, if you do want to detach these two pieces, you can. It's just I don't usually bother doing so. They're held on by two of these uh, Technic pieces. I just slide right back in these holes to keep it in place. Whew. And that is the UCS. ISD, obviously more of a display set and a play set. This is definitely worth uh, calling an 18 plus set. Um, this is just a phenomenal, phenomenal display piece for your LEGO collection. And uh, for anyone who has the Tangent 4 that came out this year, I highly suggest getting this because this would go along very well with a Tanted 4 next to it. You got the mini build right here, then you could have the actual, um, like, well-designed Tanted 4 displayed next to it. You take these minifigures, and you really just leave them by the plaque right here. So what would I rank this set in the Sawyer Studios LEGO tier system? I'm gonna give this set arm printing. It is that good. Once again, my only harp really is that it just, it takes a long time and it, it just, I mean, it has a lot of great pieces. Like, Lego couldn't have done anything about it. It's just how the set is. Like, there was no way Lego was gonna get around making this with not a lot of great pieces. There's just a lot of great pieces and it does get tiring after a while looking at all that gray. Um, also, putting big tile pieces together is such a pain. But like, if you know, if you want to look past that, 
um, and just look at the set itself. Two minifigures, two exclusive minifigures, pretty good. I would like some more, but I understand why only two. Um, I mean, this is just a phenomenal display set. Like, it's it gives you such a good feeling. And so, I mean, the feeling I got when I finished building this and when I was finished just admiring this set was just the awe of arm printing. It's just such a, oh, this is just such a well done UCS set and I'm so happy to have this in my collection. Alright everyone, thank you so much for watching. This is Zori Studios. Please like, comment, subscribe down below. Click the bell icon. The bell icon is not on so you can get notified when I'm posting new content. And please go check out the Discord server so you can get connected into the community. Also check out that merch link for my merch store down in the description below. That really would help support out the channel. Stay tuned. There's going to be a live stream December 26th and I will make a trailer to show you what it's about. Keep on the lookout for that video. Alright everyone, Zori Studios. I'll see you all next time. Peace.